Hello. Danny, don't go in 237 here. Long time no see. Uh, I sincerely apologize for not having made a video in a very long time. Um, it's the same old excuse that everybody who hasn't made a video in a long time uses. It's been, I've been busy as hell. Um, uh, I, you know, in general, I talk about movies on this channel. Um, and that's what I'm going to talk about today. Um, there are other things that I was planning on doing I haven't started yet. Uh, there was a, a series of videos I was going to make, which I am going to continue, uh, called uh, The First Time I Ever Saw. Um, I only managed to do one video about the uh, first time I ever saw Night of the Living Dead. But I am going to continue that series uh, soon. Um, I have a little bit more time on my hands right now. A lot going on, but a little bit more free time. My daughter is able to... Uh, uh, abuse herself uh, a little bit more often now. She doesn't need me to uh, keep her busy. And uh, my wife uh, has her own hobbies and things that she does. So I've got a little bit more time to myself. Um, so I'm going to talk about uh, the very few uh, Blu-rays and DVDs that I've picked up over the last several months. I've been extremely frugal about uh, spending money. Uh, not that I can't afford it. I can afford it, but, uh, we're saving up to buy a house, um, very, very slowly and unsurely, but still, that's what's going on. So I have, to my, to my shock and surprise and frustration, <laughs> I have abstained from, uh, really buying much of anything, uh, for, um, for a while. The last, uh, my last, um, criterion splurge was uh in july for their 50% uh, off sale which i already did a video of and i think actually that might have been my last video oh my god but that uh, brings me to uh, what i'm going to currently going to show you i'm going to show you a few few blu-rays that i a few uh, dvds and blu-rays that i ha that i already own uh some of which i've shown in a pre in previous videos but um the last four are ones that i just bought myself uh so these are all silent silent films um and uh i i'm a very big fan of silent cinema um again i don't have a ton i only have what is it eight 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 movies here um but i'm a big fan of charlie chaplin's films i'm a big fan of buster keaton's films uh um i i really like silent film i think it's a very um I think it's a fascinating and very emotive um, type of filmmaking. I think that movies have become very noisy. Uh, I think uh, a big problem with a lot of movies lately is characters talk way too much. Um, it's just too much dialogue. There's, you know, entire conversations that could have been cut down to a couple of lines that just go on and on and on and on and on. There's scenes that you have people you know, doing these scenes where there's no need for anybody to be talking during the action that's happening, and yet characters are constantly blah, 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 blah. So it's it's nice to go back and watch uh, a movie that was made by a filmmaker who had no choice but to tell his story, you know, just with a few, you know, a few title cards once a minute or so. So, so I'll start with the ones that I've shown already. Just uh, um, these three are... Criterions. Uh, the first one is Hoxon. This is a great movie. It's a really great, dark, um, darkly funny, uh, basically a horror movie, I would say, overall. It's a horror movie, but it's also, as I said, it's also a dark comedy. It's also, it's styled like a documentary. Um, but it's really, it's really a, a terrific movie. It's, uh, it's got some incredible visuals some uh, really um, amazing and uh, eerie um, depictions of hell. Uh, some great devil makeup, some terrific makeup effects. Um, yeah, it's really a fascinating, fascinating movie. And, uh, you know, for, for as dark as it is and for as, uh, you know, creepy as the subject matter is, it's also quite entertaining. It's very, uh, it's a lot of fun. I mean, it's got a sense of humor to it, which is always... Always nice. Uh, the next one is uh, 
Pandora's Box. This might just be my favorite Criterion release uh, because I love this movie. This is probably in my top ten films uh, because the movie is great. The movie is, is fantastic, but uh, she is just a vision. Um, Louise Brooks, just uh, it, it's a shame that she was such a pain in the ass <laughs> uh, that uh, she didn't uh, agree to stay in Germany and work with G.W. Pabst for the rest of her career because I think she would have she would have had an astonishing career if she had chosen to do that. But she was stubborn and wanted to do things her own way, even though the way she wanted to do things wasn't particularly uh, the smartest way to go about it. But uh, hey, she didn't get addicted to drugs. She didn't drink herself to death. She ended up living the last few years of her life uh, uh, as, a, uh, as a very successful writer and uh, happily. So, you know. Things work out, but yeah, this this is a wonderful film. Uh, G. W. Pabst's films are uh, are great, um, and uh, again, it's just it's the lighting, the it's it's amazing to look at. Just you can see individual. I mean, she's got that bowl haircut, you know, with the, the hair like almost looks like like it's slicked back with oil, and yet the the, the lighting is so stark. The backlighting, you can see little strand, every little tiny little strand of hair that just happens to be sticking up. You can see it. It's just like wow, you know, almost like this like halo behind her. Um, just incredibly detailed and intricate. Um, yeah, it's, it's great. This one, I might, you know, maybe there's some um, debate over whether it's officially a silent film or not, but Vampire. Um, this, uh, in film school, I saw this in film school, pardon me while I take a sip of my French press coffee here, I saw this in film school and I, th I believe the discussion we were having was the transition from sound, uh, from silent to sound. This I believe was, uh, from what I remember talking about, this was produced as a silent film. It was not intended to be released as a sound film. But it, by the time they were finished with the principal photography, silent films were done. And it was, it was sound, all sound. So they added some, um, some dialogue to it. Um, and they added sound effects and stuff to it. So basically there's almost no talking in the film. But um, there's uh, a little bit. But uh, yeah, mostly they, they added a lot of, of moody sound effects and, and music. Which, again, it's great. It's very, still very minimalist. It's just... The, the, just just barely enough to tell the story, which, uh, of course, is great. It's a, a lost art, the art of silence. I don't know whether I've shown this in a video before or not. Metropolis. Another great movie, another great German director, Fritz Lang. Uh, yeah, this is just a terrific movie. A great science fiction film, great social commentary, uh, some really surreal visuals. Um, definitely one that everybody has to see. Um, this is from uh, Kino. Um, Kino is a great company. I wouldn't say that they're quite on par with Criterion, but they're still a great company. And uh, they put out um, a lot of silent films, a lot of classic films. They just recently started putting out uh, like sleazy Euro trash films from the, uh, from the 60s and 70s. Um, but yeah, highly recommended viewing for anybody who is interested in uh, filmmaking. So now we're going to get down to the ones that I just bought myself. These are the very few. I bought all these with Christmas. Oh, I'm sorry. I got one more to show you that I already own. This is, I don't think I've shown this one before. Edgar Allan Poe's The Fall of the House of Usher. Uh, my wife got me this for Christmas. Um... I only uh, I've only watched this once, and um, it's uh, it's a great great movie. It's really uh, really creepy. Um, uh, it's a great uh, it would make a great um, double bill with the uh, Roger Corman House of Usher. Um, but uh, yeah, Louis Manuel and uh, what's his name Jean Epstein. Or Epstein, I'm not sure. Um, it's very atmospheric, very eerie, very gothic, and um, 
there's a uh, uh, again a very a very there's a very sparse um, narration through it, which which actually works. Um, but yeah, this is uh, that's great. Okay, so now we're gonna get into the ones that I uh, I just recently bought myself. So Louise Brooks again. I've been meaning to buy this for myself for a long time. Diary of the Lost Girl, another G.W. Pabst film. Um, her performance in this is just, it's, a, it's, it's amazing. Um, very few actors uh, approached acting as um, naturalistically, if that's a word, as she did. Uh, it was... Um, it was partially her and it was partially Paps because Paps would would really you know sort of you know brutally get emotional performances out of his out of his actors, but uh, I guess it was an early form of method acting. Um, but I just think she she was able to empathize with these characters. They weren't that different than her, you know. A lot there's a lot of her in uh, Lulu and what is her character's name in this movie? Um, I don't know, but she's a, uh, she, uh, she ends up in prison. Um, and, uh, it's, uh, it's just a, it's incredibly tra tra you know, a tragic movie, of course. And she's a, uh, a very tragic performance, very emotional performance. But, um, uh, yeah, they made, you know, the two of them, you know, Pabst and, and Brooks made two fantastic films together that both of which should be uh better known uh by the general public and i'm looking forward to watching this has an extra um a short on it called windy riley goes hollywood which is a uh short film that uh that brooks starred in louise brooks starred in all right so back to fritz lang now dr mabuse the gambler um, I was lucky enough to see, actually, talk about Diary of a Lost Girl and, and Pandora's Brox, Brox, Pandora's Brox, Pandora's Box. Uh, I was lucky enough to meet the curator of the, uh, the George Eastman House, uh, which was a, um, a film preservation society that preserved silent films, uh, named James Card, I believe his name was. I was lucky enough to meet him when I was in film school. And, um... He showed us uh, on the big screen uh, at a theater in Pittsburgh. He showed us, we saw Diary of a Lost Girl, and we saw, we saw this, Dr. Mabuse, the Gambler. Um, this is a great, great movie. It's a great crime thriller. It's got very subtle horror overtones to it. It's very macabre. Um, I have another Criterion uh, set. I have a Criterion set. This is Kino, uh, called um, The Testament of Dr. Mabuse. Which is a, I don't know. It's sort of, sort of, kind of a, kind of a sequel, kind of just a companion piece. I guess it's sort of like, uh, it's uh, maybe you could say it's um, what uh, Prometheus is to Alien. <laughs> um, it's not exactly a sequel or a remake, but it also kind of is a sequel, and it's kind of is a remake, but not, you know, so. I think he just wanted to make another movie about the character. Um, but this is a great, great movie. It's long, but it's absolutely fascinating. And if we went to see it, we saw it with no, uh, I don't think there was any sound. It was just the movie, silent. Um, which is not the way silent films were ever meant to be seen. They always had, well, I don't know about always, but they almost, almost always had musical accompaniment. So why they showed this to us uh, without any music or anything, I don't know. Uh, but uh, despite that, I still thought it was great. So I'm looking forward to watching this. I haven't had a chance. I need three and a half hours to <laughs> to, uh, to watch. When I have three and a half hours to kill, I have to choose between that and Seven Samurai, which I haven't watched yet. Although I watched this the other night, Kino's fantastic Blu-ray of Nosferatu. Um, this, it looks great. And this movie is so creepy and, uh, so surreal and funny. It's got a real sense of humor to it. Um, 
But uh, I don't think there's been a better adaptation of Dracula, even though this was a unofficial adaptation. I don't think there's better been a better adaptation of Dracula than this one. You know, I'm a big fan of Todd Browning's Dracula. I know it's you know some people say it's not all that great of a film. I think it's somewhat underrated. Um, but he, you know that one, the Frank Langella uh, Dracula, the you know, the friggin' Bram Stoker's Dracula was a piece of crap as far as I'm concerned. This is just um, this is by far I think the the best adaptation of uh, of Dracula that. Uh, Probably at this point will ever be made unless somebody, you know, figures out how to do it right. But Murnau did it right in the first place. So, finally, we get to the uh, the creme de la creme. Um, I was lucky enough to get to see this when it played at the Film Forum uh, in New York. And that is D.W. Griffith's Intolerance. Um... I saw Birth of a Nation when I was in film school. While I recognize that it is technically a uh, milestone in cinema, and I can appreciate the uh, the craftsmanship that went into it, and, and in the fact that it pioneered a lot of uh, cinematic techniques that are still used today, I don't want it in my house. Uh, it's a it's a really horrid. <laughs> Horrible movie as far as the subject matter goes, and if you don't know why, read about it. Um, I don't know what Griffith was thinking about at the time when the movie was made in, in 19, oh, what was it, 1913 or 14. It was, yeah, it was the, the mid-1910s. Even then, I don't think people knew what the hell he was thinking about. I think people were just like, what? What, you know, what? What is what is this? What what are you doing? This was his sort of kind of a not an apology because he said he didn't. He said he felt he didn't have anything to apologize for, but this was his sort of uh, antidote, maybe to Birth of a Nation. Uh, this movie is uh, it's incredibly intricate film. It has amazing editing for the time the film was made. This is before the concept of like artistic um, editing, especially editing to create tension, was really big in, 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 in uh, movie making. Um, but there's, like, for example, the, the whole movie takes place in four different time periods. It takes place in present day you know, the, the 1910s, 1916, I guess. Um, takes place in present day, takes place in um, France in the uh, 1700s, takes place, I think the 1700s, it takes place in, um, uh, you, you witness the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, and it takes place in ancient Babylon. So it's these four stories going on simultaneously, it just keeps cutting back and forth in between all of them. Which, when you think about it, is an, is 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 a mind blowing uh, technique for the time this came out. This movie is it's the epitome of an epic film. It's just amazing, and there's a, uh, a scene toward the end uh, where you're seeing two action sequences happen: one in present day and one in Babylon. <laughs> And it cuts back and forth and back and forth and back and forth between them. It's amazing. Um, and Carl Davis's music is just beautiful for this film. So, it, it, again, this is a this is a, a three and a half hour long movie. Uh, it didn't seem like it when I saw it. It just flew by. Uh, I highly recommend this. This is a great, great, great film and a great piece of cinematic history. Um, so, I highly recommend this one to anybody who hasn't seen it yet. So that's it. That's all that I uh, got. Those four, those four, two Blu-rays and two DVDs. The last, uh, last things that I've bought myself uh, since my birthday, which was seven months ago. 
Um, I just don't, you know, being trying to save money, trying to be responsible. So, but uh, it's a mad, 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 mad world came out today, and I uh, very much would like to buy that. I uh, I'm only uh, less than a hundred points away on the Criterion website from getting a fifty dollar gift certificate. So, I would like to uh, purchase some things for myself. Uh, to get to that point. Um, so we'll see. Uh, maybe they'll have another flash sale sometime and then I can make it a little bit more worth it. So that's it. Um, promise I'm going to be putting up more videos more often. Uh, I'm really enjoying watching everybody's videos. Uh, I'm having a good time. It's, uh, it's kind of, it's cool. This is, I was thinking to myself that it's too bad I didn't have this, that this wasn't around when I was uh, in high school, when I was a kid. Because, uh, you know, I was not uh, the most popular kid in school. I didn't have too many friends. I had enough friends, but I didn't have that many. This would have been a great outlet for me. So, you know, hey, I'm late coming to the game, but uh, late in the game, but uh, better late than never, right? So I hope everybody has a, uh, hope everybody has a good day. If you are uh, in the Northeast right now, drive carefully. It's snowing right now, and uh, that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope I gave you a few ideas of things to watch. And uh, that's all. I'll see you next time. Bye.